Instructional videos are extremely useful YouTube videos that are great for either showing a step-by-step -step process or showing an app or a software. In fact, instructional videos are some of my most popular type of videos on my YouTube channel. And the best part is that if you don't want to show your face, you can make an instructional video without showing your face on video. So let me walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how you can make instructional YouTube videos with screen recording for your YouTube channel. Are you ready? Hey Go-Getter, it's Salma Jafri. I'm the founder of YouTube Launchpad, the foundational course for growing your personal brand with video. And if you want to subscribe to this channel because you want to grow it, you want visibility, credibility, and profitability, hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon and let's begin. Now, another reason that I love instructional videos is that they are so easy to make compared to uh, videos with a lot of B-roll or cinematic footage or even just talking head videos. They are great to make and they're easy easy to make, especially if the app or software that you're talking about is in hot demand, which brings me to actually my first uh, point in this video. If you go and type in teachable, let's say you want to do a uh, instructional video on how to make your first course with teachable, right? So I'm using keywords everywhere for the search volume and also for the search trends here. So I'm going to make this larger and show you guys. Search trends are showing that this keyword term is rising. It's in pretty hot demand, right? So if you were to make a video on a software that is growing in popularity, that instructional video has a great chance of doing well, especially if it's well-made, which I'm going to show you how to do in this video, right? Another example would be uh, Zoom in this case. Again, you can see um, using keywords everywhere, you can see that the search trend has whoa, skyrocketed, right, for Zoom. So those are the kind of things you want to look out for when making it. All right, now the next thing, um, before we move on, I just want to say that I'm going to share my script with you on how to write and script out instructional videos. It's going to be at the end of this video, so stay tuned till the end. It's the same script that I've used to get videos up to 100,000 views. So you really want this video script, okay? So step two is to understand that instructional videos need to be process driven videos. So the way that I like to make them is either by making them into a step by step video. So step one, step two, step three, kind of like this video is. Or the other way I like to make instructional videos is by showing my favorite features. So if you're showing your favorite features of your app or your program that you want to showcase, then you kind of want to highlight, okay, what are your favorite features? In fact, this video that I made on TubeBuddy, if you go to YouTube and type in Salma TubeBuddy tutorial, this is the first one that will come up. And if you watch this video, you'll be able to see that all I've done in this instructional video is just highlight my favorite features about TubeBuddy. And that is a great way to make an instructional video. So both of those ways show a logical progression, which is what instructional videos are all about about. Step three is to write down the steps. You can do this in bullet point, or if you're doing a favorite features, then write down the favorite features that you'll be talking about. So for example, I've written down for this particular video, check out, this is like step by step. Like this is what I want to show. This is what I want to show next. This is what I want to show next, right? So all the steps are written here according to the video that I'm making right now. And then I just follow along with these steps. So having this in place will really make your instructional videos flow better. They'll be logical, they'll be tied in, and people will watch longer because each step leads into the next step. Now, I typically write my script inside Evernote so that I can view it on my phone as well as on my laptop. And sometimes when I'm writing scripts, I'm on my phone. And then when I open my laptop, it's all there for me. So it syncs together. So that's kind of why I use Evernote to write all of my scripts for all of my YouTube videos, especially for instructional videos such as this one. So let me pause here for a second and ask you a question. Do you script out your videos? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. I know some people love to script them out and others just cannot script, right? So let me know. And remember, at the end of this video, you'll be able to download my video script template. Stay tuned for that. Step four is to make the video using screen casting software. Now I'll probably do a whole another video on like the best screen casting softwares to use both free and paid and for Windows and Mac and all of that. And in fact, if you want me to do that video, let me know in the comments, type in Salma make that video. Okay, just type that in and I and you both will have the 
secret will know what we're talking about, okay? But in this video, I wanna show you that I use ScreenFlow for Mac, so I'm gonna take you through the process, but the process is pretty similar no matter what software you're using. And the things to keep in mind are the things that I'm gonna talk about that are important no matter what software you're actually using. Okay, so since I'm using ScreenFlow, what I'm gonna go here and do is go to File, click on New. And so this is step five. You wanna be able to decide whether you want your face showing in your instructional video or not. So you wanna choose what the desktop screen is gonna be, what your, whether you want your face showing, and then where the audio is gonna come in from. So these are typically the three things you need to decide for any instructional video. So in this case, I've clicked yes to record desktop from my monitor here. And I'm going to, and I've also clicked record audio. And if I have my USB mic, um, plugged in, which I don't in this setup right now, I will typically choose from here my USB mic. So you want to choose the mic that you want the audio for, uh, recorded from. And uh, from here, you want to choose record video from, and you can choose whether you want to record your face. So you can see that in this case, it's choosing the default FaceTime HD camera, which is already with the MacBook. But typically when I do screencast videos, I'll use my Logitech webcam to get a better and um, wider resolution. So I'll link to all the equipment that I use to make screencasting videos. I'll link to them in the description below. So make sure you go and check that out at the end of this video. Okay, now the next thing you need to decide is the format that you're going to be making this video in, the screen dimensions, the screen resolutions, and also you want to decide, uh, you want to do like a quick audio and video test just to make sure everything's actually working. The amount of times people like make a video and then find out later on that the audio was never recorded is a lot. So you don't want to be that person, right? So you want to quickly choose the format. Now the formats that ScreenFlow is offering me is uh, kind of limited. So it's like 1280 by 720 is the highest resolution format. I'm going to choose that. And then in the document settings, what I will do is, let me come out of this and show you. It's really important to uh, film a screencast video and then render it or export it in the same resolution. And I'm gonna show you why that matters so much, right? But here in this case, what I'm going to do is choose the resolution that I wanna film in. So I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna to go to document settings and I'm going to choose uh, the output settings. So whether I want the video to be in 1080p, I can choose that from here. Whether I want it to be in 720p, I can choose that from here, right? So in this case, let's go with 720p. So I'm gonna choose that and click update. Okay, so that sets my screen dimensions and then maybe I'll hit record and do like a quick test just to make sure my audio and video is the way that I want it to be. Also in this step, what I wanna do is make sure that my face is according to how I want it to be. So I wanna also show you how to switch between showing your face and then showing your screen, right? So here's how we do it in ScreenFlow. And this is, again, something very similar to what you would do in other software as well. You, you have on your timeline, two uh, videos, <laughs> one is my face and the other is the screen recording, right? So I'm gonna choose my face and then I can move this around. So I can make this smaller, put it in the corner, and then when I'm editing, I can actually cut this video and either remove my face if I don't want to show it, or I can move it to the back by doing this. So let me show you. I can actually remove my face here by taking it below the screen recording, right? So then it disappears. And so I can split the screen here and say, oh, okay, well, in the beginning, I want my face so I can put it up. Let me show you how this works. So play this. So in the beginning, I want it there and then I don't want it there, right? So you can just split, you can make cuts inside your video and then decide whether you want to show your face or not. You can place your face anywhere on the screen. You can play around with the settings of that. You can scale it up, scale it down, make it really small, bring it up. Uh, put it on a corner. This is a really useful way to keep that engagement level going with your audience. So your face is popping up and in and out, and it's a great way to add a little bit of movement into your videos. All right, step seven. I hope you're still with me because this is 
worth it, okay, if you do all of these steps. Step seven is what I like to do is prep all of my screens that I want to show. So when I'm writing my script and I'm going over my script, I'm like, okay, I want to show this, I want to show this, I want to show this. So what I'll typically do, and I'll show you this right now, is I'll have all of these window tabs open so that I can just seamlessly shift from one to the other to the other, right? So if I want to show something, I don't have to waste time with internet load times and screen load times and then sit there and wait while it loads up. You know, I have everything ready to go at the time of shoot. It just makes shooting faster and easier for me. Step eight is to add a little bit of interactivity. Now you can do that by uh, zooming in to a certain area, by adding call outs, by um, adding transitions and adding text into your video. So one of the things that I do is scale uh, scale up or zoom in, especially if I'm showing text or a process that's not very clear. So for example, this text is too small to read on screen. So what I'll do is I'll add an action here. I'll select the screen first, add an action, and then scale this up move it to the place I want it to move it to, right? So now people can actually read this and that sort of adds in that zoom in, zoom out effect, keeps movement happening on your screen. And when the um, when you're done with, the, with showing that thing, you can scale back out. And all you need to do is add the action again and scale it back down, I think it was 89%, and then move it back in place. So this is how it look when it plays. There we go. That was short, but you can make it longer, right? Okay, so you want to add in those kind of effects depending on what software you're using. You can add text. That's a really easy one. Every software will support that. You can zoom in. That is a really, really great way to show specific areas of the screen because one thing I absolutely hate in instructional videos is they're showing a screen and you just cannot read what is happening and you cannot follow along. So don't do that to your audience. Make sure that you make your videos easy to process and easy to follow along with. Your audience will appreciate you for it. Trust me. Step nine in our process is to make any color adjustments or audio adjustments. So what I typically like to do is go into the audio here and let's choose the audio first, unmute it. And then what I like to do is remove background noise. And then sometimes I'll even smooth volume levels depending. So you can go and see that. And then for the actual picture, you can also just select this. And then maybe you can go to color controls and you can select saturation, brightness, contrast. So again, depending on your software, just adjust the video settings for your face as well as for the screen and for the audio. We are finally ready to render this file, which means we're going to export it. Now, a common mistake people make is they go to file and then they go to something like publish to YouTube. No, we do not want to publish to YouTube. What? We don't want to? No, we don't want to publish to YouTube. A lot of errors in processing happen when you go direct from software to social media platforms. Okay, you do not want to do that. You want to export it to your computer first, see if everything looks okay, see if everything's working properly, and then upload it to YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you want to do is instead of publish to YouTube directly, you want to go to export. And in here, we're going to choose the same document settings that we chose for when we first started this video, which was 720p. So it's really important to choose the same settings. And I'll show you why in just a second, right? So I'm going to say, okay, test recording. Uh, let's call this five and then um, normal. And then in resolution, we'll choose 1280 by 720, which is the same resolution that we chose at the beginning of this uh, screen recording. So if your document settings do not match your export settings and the aspect ratio is different, then this is what's going to happen. YouTube is going to stretch out your video and that does not look attractive at all. So you want to avoid that. And in order to avoid that from happening, make sure that your document settings and your export settings are the same. And if you're confused about YouTube sizes and all that, then I would say that go and Google YouTube video resolution size, and you'll see that these are all the recommended dimensions that you can actually make your instructional video in. So anywhere from 240p all the way up to 2160p. All right. So these are all the recommended dimensions for YouTube. 
All right, as promised, I'm gonna tell you where to go to download my video script template that has gotten my videos up to 100,000 views. I'll put the link right on top in the description. So go and download the video script template from there and script out your instructional videos. And we'll go watch this video next on how to write a video script or structure a video script, whichever is your jam.